Hello and welcome. Thanks for your interest in my personal NeoVim setup. First of all, I won't cover the differences between VI, Vim and NeoVim. If you are interested, just check out official sources, something like uh, Wikipedia, where you can see information about Vim and also NeoVim. And Wikipedia also has a full overview of the development history, which editor derived from which one. So I won't cover that. Instead, let's focus on the setup itself. Let's start with how the configuration works. I've written another blog post especially about that. And as you can see, I've already opened my um, Vim folder where all the configuration is in. And as I'm using NeoVim, the file that's uh, that is sourced is initvim. And within this file, you can see that I'm loading further configuration files from within the configs folder. So I can structure my configuration into different separated files and group them based on the technical features used by Vim. So that's how I structure my configuration. So I don't have one big bloated Vim RC file. Instead, I can separate different um, configuration instructions, such like configuring the status line and things like that. Okay, the next part which you might be interested in are the plugins. And of course, I can't show every single plugin I'm using. And you can find a list in the blog post. Instead, I will demonstrate some features of the plugins. Therefore, I will switch to my own website installation. So we have a real uh, word project to demonstrate all these usages. First of all, let's start with AGWIM, <clears throat> which is already deprecated, but as, but as mentioned in my blog post, I don't update my plugins on a regular basis. Instead, only if I'm missing a feature or encounter a bug. So my workflow is not interrupted too much. I'm, I've installed AG on the command line. Uh, it's a tool which provides a faster search. Uh, there are different implementations and other tools um, and that would be a full blog post on its own. So let's start. I'm using this shortcut here to search on a project-wide um, file base and can now search, for example, for topics on my website. And this plugin will integrate seamlessly with Vim, use a quick fix list and um, will populate it with the search results. So I can just see, okay, uh, here are all the topics, occurrences. And the nice thing about this tool and some others is that it will respect the git ignore of my project. So you can see I have a git ignore and I've excluded some parts like as this is a PHP project, the vendor folder with external code. And if I want to search that as well, I can say ignore that one and search everything and it will now find also topics in other parts. So that's the very first basic plugin I'm using. The next one is AL. AL integrates further external tools for example, for linting files. So when I'm opening a PHP file like this one, I'm following a specific coding standard called PSR12. And if I'm not following the standard, L will um, call in the background um, a separate insulated tool, uh, which provides the implementation of the linting. And L will communicate with that one and will highlight an issue. So in this case, I can see there's an issue on this line. I can also see where exactly in this line the issue is. And if I'm on the line, I can also see what exactly the issue is. So that's um, basically what I'm using AL for. It can do a lot uh, more things, but that's what I'm using it for. Um, the next one is COG, and I've only installed it because it's supporting language server protocol for auto-completion. Uh, for quite some years, I didn't have auto-completion besides the one uh, coming with RIM by default. But nowadays, I've also added this one 
and together with another plugin, which we will see um, uh, in the later part of this video, I get this auto completion just like you expected from um, IDEs. So my editor, or at least a plugin, uh, really knows, okay, item is of type grid column item and provides the following methods um, and also um, auto completes uh, or provides information whether they are public and what they will return themselves. So if I call that one, I get an auto completion for the column. So quite handy, especially if you are working with foreign code and APIs, so you don't have to check the uh, source code and the documentation all the time. One of the most important plugins is Control P, uh, which provides this drop down, which I've opened in the above uh, part of my window. And it comes already with quite some features like navigating between files in the project, opening buffers, and stuff like that. It doesn't have uh, fuzzy features like FDF, um, but you can use regular expressions. So for example, if I want to have something from local packages, I can prefix it and can say whatever comes next and I want some PHP file, for example. So that's how I navigate in the project. And it also can be extended. So I have another shortcut uh, to get text from the current file. So I can navigate to the class and the method. And let's open some PHP code with more methods. So you get a better impression. Let's open a PHP file of type of three, which is much uh, larger. And if I now open the control P plugin with the text of the current buffer, I can now filter um, uh, the available methods and properties and stuff like that of the current file. So pretty handy. And I can also switch between the different buffers. So that's a must have, at least for me. Of course, there again are also other plugins available. I will not cover new tags because I guess you won't use that one. I will also not cover NeoTerm because I don't use it as a terminal. I'm using Vim inside the terminal already. So instead I use Tmux and switch over to another terminal. I've just installed NeoTerm in order to have the test execution within my Vim. We will see that also later. Nurtry is a plugin that you can already see on the left part of my uh, Vim, which is just a tree of the file structure. I still use it um, when I'm following a specific structure or know, okay, this file is uh, right, or the next file I want to open is right besides the current file, stuff like that. Also, sometimes it's nice to get an overview. And I've configured it, of course, like everything else to be as minimal as possible to not distract, uh, to not disturb my workflows and can easily turn on uh, hidden files, like the files starting with a dot, stuff like that. It also allows you to open files, to rename files, to copy files, uh, add files, and stuff like that. Next up is PHP Actor. And I will bring up the website, the documentation of the project. And PHP Actor itself, as the name suggests, is specific for PHP. It is a command line tool written in PHP and it provides refactoring stuff. So you can use the command line utility to uh, refactor your PHP methods into interfaces, rename classes, all those kind of things. It also has a language server nowadays. So that's the combination with Coq to provide auto completion for PHP. And it also has navigation, like go to definition, stuff like that, which I'm not using. I'm using the native PHP stuff. And it also comes with an uh, implementation as a Vim plugin to integrate all of that seamlessly into um, your editor. So let's switch back to my own file and say, uh, let me think a moment uh, for an example. Yeah, for example, I write some code like the grid column item. 
and didn't import the PHP namespace right now. I've then created a shortcut to call the PHP actor plugin to just import the namespace. And now it's imported again. And in case there are multiple matching uh, namespaces, like for example, the object manager, uh, object manager is only available once, but I guess the query builder, yeah, we can already see there are two implementations, one of type three itself and one by doctrine. And now if I import, uh, the plugin will ask me which one to import. Do I want to have the doctrine one or the type three one? And now I can select the type of three one. And the nice thing is if you have the same tries. So for example, you also want to have the other query builder and you want to import again, you can say, okay, this time I want to have doctrine. And he will say, yeah, this is already important. So the name query builder is already uh, chosen. Please provide an alias. And now I could say, okay, the doctrine query builder and it will already import an alias this one. So I'm not going to explain all of the features, of course, but uh, that way you already get an uh, impression how powerful this one is. And it really brings the uh, IDE features to your whim. And it sometimes is even ahead of uh, when talking about the refactoring stuff. So you definitely need to check out this plugin and tool if you are using whim and PHP development. Next up is TechBar. Um, if you are familiar with other IDEs, you know the outline or structure view, which provides an overview of the different parts of the current file, like classes, namespaces, properties, methods, and stuff like that. TechBar brings that feature into your Vim, and it uses the C text, which we'll cover later. So I can get an overview uh, of the parts of this file, which doesn't make much sense for such a small file, but let's switch back to type of three uh, example file and we can see there's a lot more here. I've configured to not show properties, only the methods. And you can also see that if your CTEX implementation provides information, it will also add the information whether something is protected, private or public. So the green plus sign is public, um, the pound sign is protected and the minus is private. And you can just jump to those parts. You can also configure whether the right one, the tag bar should update if you're inside another method. But I've turned all those kind of things off because they um, just interrupt my workflow. Um, next up is UndoTree. Uh, NeoVim and Vim itself have a um, tree structure of your changes. So whenever you make a change, it will, um, update the internal state and save that one. And you can jump back and forth to all those states. And in case it is a linear history, there is no problem. You can just do undo um, and stuff like that. So I guess I, I'm not used to that one. Yeah, with undo list, you can see the changes, I guess, and switch back and forth. Um, but undo tree makes this thing visible. And if I go back, uh, to an older version, you can see the S for save, that are the saved states of the file. And now do another change. Uh, we get different branches and you can now switch also between the different states. So that's also pretty cool and a must have for me. Next up is vDebug. I'm using it in combination with xDebug to debug PHP, but it also should support Python, Ruby, and in general, all DGBP debugger. Um, I will demonstrate it for you. I will just add a breakpoint here more to demonstrate the, the plugin itself. Let's add a breakpoint through the plugin. Uh, you can see the color isn't nice. I've not used that a lot. I'm using the PHP functions instead. I also need to turn xDebug on. And now we wish uh, we should be able to open the front end of my website, open something with an 
video because this is for the video. Turn on debugging here as well. And now we can say, okay, please start the debugger. It will now wait. We can reload the website and it will open the, um, the debugger layout in a new tab so you can switch back and forth. So for some reason it didn't work, probably because caching is involved. So it, the code itself is not um, executed. Therefore, we'll log into the backend, which is now slow as well because it will intercept all the requests right now. And once I am inside the backend, I can reload without caching. And that one, ah, sorry, that's the one for the back end. So if I'm going to the back end preview, I should get the debugging example working yet. So that's how the overview looks like. On the left side, we have the current code and we can see that we are on that line right now. We have the status that we are listening and connected and everything. We have the stack trace, so we can see exactly what code was executed. And we have a debugger watch where I can switch uh, between the current local variables, uh, global variables and stuff like that. I can do an vdebug evil to evaluate something. So for example, I could type item get record, uh, get column and uh, yeah. Um, not sure about the API right now. And I uh, will get the evaluated result. In case I want to have the current state again, I just execute vdebug evil without anything and get the state back. And I've configured some uh, shortcuts to do a step-by-step -step debugging, to step into something, to step out stuff like that. So it's really as convenient as uh, more or less every other IDE with some benefits because everything is text. So you can copy everything. Most GUI applications just prevent you from copying stuff you are interested in. So let's uh, remove the breakpoint and turn debugging off again and continue. Snippet, I will not uh, explain that one. We'll just bring snippets uh, to your editor, but I will go into Vim tests, which is pretty awesome. And just like A comes pre-configured for, um, yeah, at least, I guess, 50 uh, frameworks out there for different languages. And once I go to a test case, let's open an open source extension for Typo3, which has quite some tests. We can just open the test file and execute the current test file, which is a shortcut in my case. And it will uh, generate the necessary command line call. So you can share that with others. You will get the output in my case inside of the near term. And that's it. And the cool thing is that you have shortcuts to execute the current test. So the nearest one and the current file and the current test suite and uh, stuff like that. And you can also call repeat the last execution, which is pretty handy. So in case I'm working on a specific part, I can execute the test, switch over to my code, adjust the code and continually uh, re-execute the last executed test, which is pretty awesome. Next up is color scheme. Not much to say here. I've created my very own color scheme derived from other color schemes, which um, plays or is exactly the same like all the rest of my terminal and my desktop applications, as you can see. And also is my website. And I've provided some links where you can search through existing um, color schemes. Last but not least, let's have a look at the auto commands. I find them very, very useful and a powerful feature, uh, which is also available for some other editors and IDEs. But as far as I know, 
most of the popular IDEs make it very complex to set uh, something like that up and it's way easier in Vim. Let's stick to type 3 because that's the biggest example. I didn't clean it up yet, so uh, yeah, sorry for the mess, but uh, let's have a small um, introduction. Auto commands will just issue a specific command if a certain event happens. In this example, um, the event is that a buffer is written. After that happened, and if the buffer matches this uh, expression, then the command should be executed. And this is just a regular Vim command. So in this case, I will just delete files in my file system. Typo3 itself has a huge caching system, and I've configured Typo3 to write the caches to the file system. So in that way, I can have all caches enabled during development time and let my Vim clear the caches because I ex exactly know if I change a certain file, I know which cache to clear. And that way I don't have to worry about manual cache clearing or slow development environment. It will just work. And that's pretty awesome. Um, most of the time you will find something like this, which I also had from the beginning, which will just reload your Vim configuration file after you save it. That saves a lot of time, especially at the beginning where you continuously change your Vim configuration. And I have the same for the color scheme. So in case I'm working on the color scheme, change something, this one will be reloaded afterwards. So changes uh, directly take effect. And you can also use stuff like that for example, to reload some other programs. Like for example, if I change the dumpst RC file, which is a configuration for my notification program, um, it will uh, trigger a restart. So everything uh, is applied after, uh, after saving with my whim. And um, we are not finished yet. Um, there are some small functions. I'm not going too much into detail about them, um, but I find those pretty useful um, and I use them a lot. They just allow me to copy a file. So I can call, I've not created shortcuts for them. I'm not using them that often. So I can say, okay, copy relative file path. Now I have um, them in a clipboard and I can paste them somewhere, for example, to share them in a, uh, in a chat or something like that. And the last part is actually the external tools. As mentioned before, um, those functions overview is generated by C tags. There are different implementations. Um, I guess I'm using universal C tags, but I'm not even sure about that. And that's a tool that you can configure in one file. I've uh, configured it to be recursive, exclude certain files and paths, um, provide a proper PHP implementation, edit some type of three specifics, uh, like the language IDs from language files and sections from templates. So I can directly navigate to the translation of a um, specific ID inside of type of three projects um, and stuff like that. So that's pretty awesome. I've configured which languages should be supported. I'm not working with Go, Ruby uh, that much anymore, so I can turn them off. And same for Java. And yeah. And the important thing are those kinds. Um, you, for each regular expression, so that's a nice thing, you can easily extend it and just add a regular expression and say, okay, matching this one should be defined as I, ID, IDs that are just different, um, it's all meaning the same, are different shortcuts. And you can now say, okay, which of those kinds do you want to have or remove? So that are, those are added to the text file. So if you head over to a project again and open the text file, we can see a full index of all those tags inside of this project. And you can see there are more than uh, 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 30,000 lines in there. And these also contain information about the tag itself, the file, and expression to find it inside the file. So if you add lines, it doesn't have to define this line, 
but Vim is able to execute the search and still find it. And it will also add information like, okay, it's a function, language PHP, and further information, which then are available for tools like Control P or TechBar, where you can make use of them. So that's the last thing I want to show, um, how to put these together. We've already seen the CTEX configuration file. Now let's see Control P and the tag bar. So in Control P, I've defined for the different file types, like for example, Fluid, which is the template engine of Type 3, which types I want to show. So that's how you can limit the provided results in Control P. Pretty easy. And for tag bar, you can do more or less the same. So in case of PHP, I've said which uh, kinds I want to have and which one uh, I don't want to have. So that's it. I hope you find uh, this video helpful and interesting and have fun with the blog post.